in another rainbow. We have had quite a few this year. Kobe is very scared of the thunder, as always. He's not scared of any coyotes or raccoons, but he's scared of thunder. Yep. Look at those streaks of light coming through the sky. Well, the rain gauge measured about seven tenths, um, but uh, I think we got more than that because it came pretty sideways, blowing wind pretty hard. Yep. But we are super thankful. We needed it. We'll take any rain we can get in August. So, what do you think, Kobe? <laughs> All right, Kobe. We're gonna move on to the next clip. He's like, "This is my best side, Dad. This is my best side." Today we are out here at um, our alfalfa field and we're laying down some alfalfa with the uh, Kubota DMC. Nathan just finished baling across the creek um, what was laid down a couple days ago. And so I'm gonna go help him uh, move those bales off the field. Uh, but I thought uh, while I was here, um, I would get some footage of dad for you guys running the mower conditioner. Um, this isn't definitely isn't our um, best alfalfa. This is a third cutting and it hasn't really rained very much. Um, if you've been following us, we've gotten a few kind of life-saving rains, but we've pretty much been dry all summer. Um, those rains don't even really hardly make puddles because uh, there's huge cracks in the ground and the, the ground's really dry. So the alfalfa is, is not great, but it's it's also not bad. Uh, it's, it's actually probably doing better than we thought it would. So that's good. Once again, I know we say it every video, but this field smells so amazing right now. It's like, you know, you just wanna 
Mm. All right, we're over here on the other side of the creek. We've got a little alfalfa patch over here as well, um, but it's in a floodplain, and so we store the bales. Um, the, you can't really tell on camera there's a ridge here, um, which is fine, except it's kind of a cramped, kind of a cramped space to uh, store these bales. And then we're um, these are old bales that we baled earlier in the year, and Nate, we're taking them back to the farm today. And so Nathan's just got a little bit of room here to uh, load these bales. So you can see our Milo here on the knoll. Again, it's really hard to tell. It looks very flat on camera, but there's actually a rise here and it doesn't grow very well on the knoll um, or wherever there's poorer soil. Um, that's pretty much the case with all of our fields this year is the poorer soil is struggling because it's not getting enough rain. But just a few yards away from that spot, we've got some really nice looking Milo. And that's the case for this whole flat part of the field. Um, but you can kind of tell from standing here, it goes up and it runs out of moisture on this knoll. It leaches down into the lower area. So. And it's, this is just kind of more sandy soil here where this is really nice bottom soil. Farming can be a challenge in that sense, especially here in Kansas. We've got some really good soil. We got some really poor soil and then it doesn't rain all summer. And so um, you end up with parts of the field looking like that and parts of the field looking, you know, kind of spotty. All right, Nathan got the uh, semi loaded there, but we've got to uh, run the rake over to the other alfalfa field, so I'm gonna go pick him up. Kobe's been riding along with me. You enjoying the air conditioning, buddy? It's supposed to be 103 degrees today. It's been um, over 100 degrees every day this week. Uh, you saw at the beginning of the video, we got rain, um, but that was only about a half inch, and when it's 100 degrees every single day, I think it's been like, I think one of the days was like, a heat index of 110. So when it's like that, the half inch of rain goes away pretty quick. But our crops are holding on for the most part. We're following Nathan across the creek bridge here to the other alfalfa field. All right, so he's gonna park it in the shade there. Dad is finishing up the alfalfa over there. All right, there he goes. I'm going to leave this pickup at the edge of the field for dad to take home. And then Nathan, eh, I'm gonna ride home in that with Nathan. Hey, that's my seat. You're gonna have to sit in the middle. So what have you been up to this week? Wednesday. So we uh, decided to haul out some more manure. Yeah, we didn't really film any of that, but we've been spreading some more manure, just so like the last video you saw a couple of videos ago. Yeah, we, we were able to finish that whole field, uh, so that was nice. And um, so one day was hauling, and one day was spreading. What's funny is that we're like less than a month away from like pretty nice fall temperatures. 
but we ain't there yet. It is hot today. going to give you guys a little overview of the uh, Kubota DMC 8540R that uh, we've been using this year. Uh, we've got uh, our two Kubota reps out here. They're going to explain some of its features and uh, some of some of the things that we like about it. Hi, right, good yeah. morning. I'm Bruce Spidel. I'm an ag product specialist to cover western Kansas, Colorado, and Nebraska. Yeah, and I'm Clint Hurl, also an ag product specialist with Kubota. I cover eastern Kansas, Missouri, and southern Illinois. Awesome. Well, the Peterson so, brothers were kind of right on yeah. the line for us, so they right get double the teamed by, uh, <laughs> oh, by both of us most of the time. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. so it's been a pleasure, uh, obviously, working with you guys uh, over the past couple of seasons. So, yeah, let's just kind of dive into the uh, the DMC uh, series of more conditioners. So one thing is uh, Kubota's got both the uh, side pull machines, left-hand pull, and the center pivot machines. Um, and we're just actually introducing to our dealers uh, right now in our order writing program, a brand new for full production next year, uh, 15 and a half foot uh, machine, a DMC 8547R. And plus we make the Tyne machines as well. Uh, we've got the roller machine with, uh, with the Peterson brothers because uh, they do a lot of alfalfa and a lot of other crops works very well. We get uh, some areas where it's uh, predominantly grass and the customers like the uh, tine machines. So I guess we can just uh, go over a couple of the main highlights of the machine here. Maybe we'll start out at the time. One of the, one of the things you'll see here is uh, all of our units come standard with a uh, uh, swivel gearbox. So you'll see that, that gearbox design uh, allows you to turn 90 degrees in either direction. So you're not putting that drive line in a, in a bind when you're on really tight turns. That drive line's always straight with the machine. Also coupled with that is you can easily swap it from 540 to 1000 PTO RPM, uh, depending on the tractor that you have. You just simply flip that gearbox one way or, th or the other and change out the yoke so you can run it with any tractor, uh, depending on your needs there. So, um, other than that, you know, I guess we can kind of, everything's pretty uh, standard. We've got the, the, the hood that uh, swings out, so we've got full access to the cutter bar uh, area here. Um, this machine has got the uh, tri-lobe design. We got three blades on each, uh, I call, like to call them turtles. Uh, and right now we've actually got the high lift kit on most of these turtles. We've changed back and we got the standard on, on the one. So this is our high lift kit that we used for the oats, those real tall oats, lush oats that, uh, that you guys did. But then here's also one of the regular uh, lift kits that's on this machine. And those come standard with the roller machines. The tine machines don't have those. It's not necessary with that uh, with that type of design. The cutter bar, it's a low profile cutter bar. Uh, we've got the tilt mechanism uh, for it to get to the angle that you want. You can easily set your roll gap, your roll uh, pressure uh, for the conditioning rolls to uh, keep them again for various crops and uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the year. Another thing you're mentioning the rolls, Bruce, if you kind of look uh, regardless of which machine of ours, uh, we have full width conditioning. So if you see how wide those rollers are, they go out to the uh, to the center or the edge of each of the outside discs. So we're we're not uh, bringing extra material into the edge of those rollers. We got full conditioning on on all the machines. It allows smooth uh, smooth crop flow all the way through. So Clint. Are you going to beat uh, Greg with that? <laughs> that's right, look out. Yeah, that's, that's right. So, it's no, a little this, scary. It's a little yeah, scary. <laughs> look out. No, this is actually uh, uh, the quick change blade tool. So uh, these machines come standard with uh, with our quick change blade option. Um, I was going to show you real quick how to change the blade. So um, basically, you just put this. It's just a pry bar, basically, is all it is. And this one's been out in the field, obviously. But uh, you get it back in there, and you pry down. And then the blade... Come right off so you can remove your blade real easy these blades are reversible once they wear you can just flip it over and put your new edge and get two uses on it so we'll put it back in you just make sure it goes back in all the way raise your your bar back up there so we really like um, being able to change those like that compared to our old um, swather that we had uh, that you know we were constantly doing maintenance on that constantly replacing sickle sections it uh, just took took a lot of time, and so um, this this saves us a lot of time, saves us a lot of maintenance. So that's one of our favorite features. As we come around to the back end of the machine, you notice that we've got two large springs on each side of the machine, and those are the flotation springs. 
They're very laterally positioned, allows for a good, even if you counter an obstruction in the field to really kind of come back up and slide right back down into the crop very instantaneously. Uh, you've got full ability to change your conditioning uh, in regards to your swath formation. If you want to lay a full width swath with this machine, again, we got the, uh, the extra wide conditioning rolls. You can actually take out the, these eye bolts and take these uh, uh, swath uh, forming shields out. They just are hooked at the, at the up at the front. Take them out, lift them out, and you get full width swath. Or we can move them in basically as, like they are today. They're fully in and then move your swath board up or down depending on the type of windrow formation that you want to make. Uh, so it's, it's really convenient mm -hmm. to uh, change from crop to crop uh, in regards to if you wanted to uh, lay that full width swath or narrow fluffy windrow on it. Um, oh, one more thing to point out. Um, you mentioned earlier, Bruce, to adjust your stubble height and your cutting height. I guess uh, it's easy to access over here on this right side. And the machine is in the up position to, to adjust this. You lower the machine to the ground, but there's just a, a nut that we adjust this all thread up or down. Um, when it's down on the ground, it's easy to access. And that controls the tilt of your cutter bar, like you mentioned, just from that one point. And I think uh, transport, again, maybe going back to uh, just the, the breadth of uh, our lineup of uh, mowers and mower conditioners, we've got a full range of three-point uh, mounted mowers and uh, some mower conditioners now. We also have the, uh, the triple mower conditioner set up uh, that you put a machine on the front of a tractor and have the two decks on the rear or possibly a, a, a deck on the front of a tractor plus a single uh, right hand mounted three point, uh, uh, both mowers and mower conditioners uh, in that. So I think that uh, maybe surprises a lot of people, the, the breadth, of, uh, breadth of our line. But I've, uh, I've sold a couple of those uh, triple mower conditioner setups in my, in my territory. Uh, they tie right into a ISO bus monitor that the, the customer would maybe have on his large row crop tractor that he'd be putting this on. So definitely something to think about uh, versus a self-propelled windrower that just use for hay and that's really all you get to use it for. So, but uh, yeah, uh, if you're interested, obviously we got the Kubota USA website uh, that's got everything listed. Uh, there are 13 of uh, the Clinton and I's uh, around the country that uh, we love to get out and work with customers, uh, demonstrate machines, help deliver machines, follow up after the sale, yep. make sure that uh, everybody's uh, happy with, uh, uh, with, with the product. Yeah, working with our dealers to help support the customers yes. is, is what we're here for. So, um, I guess one other thing to point out here under this shield, uh, uh, with this roller conditioner machine is the rollers are both tied together with this gearbox assembly. So both of our rollers are driven. We're not relying on one roller to do all the work. They're both turning together. Yep, for narrow transport, both of the side shields flip up flip and, up. Uh, and transport for a narrow width. You can see actually uh, our transport width with the shields up is actually narrower than our cutting width because our blades oh, do yeah. stick out a yeah, few inches past the cutter there. ball. So here in our part of Kansas, the uh, the narrow road transport isn't as huge a deal as you can see. Our, our roads are not very busy and there's not a whole lot on the sides of them, but uh, in maybe more urban parts of the country, um, that's definitely a, a big plus is to be able to, to go down the road and not have to get off so far or not worry about running into stuff. All right, so folded the shield back over the front. It's ready to go back to the field next time we're ready to use it. Uh, thanks guys for explaining some of the features and thanks for helping us, helping us out with the questions that we have. If you guys have any questions about this machine, uh, just leave them in the comments and um, either I or, or Bruce or uh, somebody will be there to answer them and uh, hopefully you can learn a little bit more about it. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.